What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Order Stuff. And for you today, I thought you would enjoy my first seven days of experiencing the A7S III, a camera that I've been waiting for for five years. So I shot this segment on day one. I don't know whether my autofocus is working that well, you tell me. I also apologize if it looks a bit odd, it's because of the new camera, it's not completely set up. I haven't changed my lighting at all. I just hope it still looks good. Anyway, here we go. This is kind of my video diary of my first week using this camera and um, I just hope you find it interesting. Enjoy. Okay, let's see what we got. Box is a little bit tatty, that's okay. Five years after the release of the second one. Let's do it. Breaking the seal. Making a hash of this. Instructions. Oh wow. Yeah. Might not might not need all of that. Let's put them aside for now. What's this? Oh yeah, that's that's for your cables. A lead. Excellent, that's a USB-C to USB. A strap. Oh look, that's different. It actually says S3 rather than just A7. That's new. Um, I don't love them. Probably won't use that strap. Ah, that's the body, let's wait. That's the charger. Ah uh, yeah, for the new Z-type battery. Excellent. Power cable and US power cable. That's what I need. The body itself. And there we have it. Mmm. It's so strange to have an A7S with a rotating flip out screen. It's so nice. Beautiful. It's definitely more chunky. Definitely more chunky. Weight is about the same, I would say. Um, it feels much better in the hands, that's for sure. Love this feel of that, it's great. All the buttons feel better. I can feel that immediately. I really like that they moved manual mode and video mode together, basically. All right, obviously no battery inside. We'll need to get a few more. Let's check out, see what else is in there. This one, battery, hopefully. Yes, excellent. And this is gonna say to charge it before using it, but I'm such a renegade, so let's not do that. Let's just fire it straight up and see what happens. Let's have English. Yeah, let's just skip through that for now. And there we go. I have a lot to do with this camera. Immediately it was telling me that the battery needed charging, obviously, so let's do that. Uh, so that's all I can give you for now, just initial impressions. It seems more chunky, which I really like. And the buttons feel good. Feels er ergonomically improved in every way so far. It's thicker as well. So I'm going to get this charged up and stick a lens on, see what happens. It's still making that annoying noise when I hit record. I need to work out how to get rid of that. So it's day two and um, I've been using the camera for a little bit. I've done some test shots. As you saw, I recorded the intro to this video. And the autofocus works brilliantly with the Sigma MC11 adapter. Um, I've got the Sigma 20mm f1.4 on at the moment and it's just brilliant. Like no matter what I do, I can see in the corner of my eye, I can see that there's, there's a box on my eye and it's working brilliantly. As for the Canon lenses, all of my EF glass, the rest of the autofocus hasn't worked yet. So when you buy the A7S III there are a couple of other things you need. Um, I needed a spare battery and some V90 SD cards with a higher capacity than the 64 gig ones I was using before. I've gone up to 128 um, and so Amazon Prime very fast. I've got me a new Z-Type battery which is brilliant but quite expensive and I've gone for the two of the Pro Grade 128 gig cards and that's the V90 the faster type but do you know how much these things cost me the two cards the extra battery tree fiddy so be aware you'll need to add that on 
when you buy this camera. It's day three and I've started looking at the picture profiles. At the moment I'm in S-Log3 and I'm exposed at zero, as in zero stops overexposed, which I never would have done in the A7S II. Kind of just hoping that you can expose normally with S-Log3 now, but uh, we'll see. In fact, it's just getting, it's, I've just got the natural light, so it's getting a bit dark. I'm gonna plug in a light just to, just to improve things. There we go, that's a bit better. I am gonna keep it at zero just to see what it looks like. But the one thing I've noticed when you go into the picture profiles menu, every single one of them, the default detail level, AKA sharpness is set to zero. And when I did test shots, I noticed that for me was way, way too sharp looking. And of course, life is not sharp. So with this profile, I've turned the sharpening all the way down to minus seven, which is the lowest it can go. And it looks like this. Now let's go to plus seven and I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. That's what plus seven looks like. I don't like it. So bear in mind, you might have to go through, if you've got custom settings, custom picture profiles, you might want to go in and just dial it down. I have also started playing around with the color settings, the white balance settings, that kind of thing. So hopefully I'll have more to tell you once I've done some more testing, but it's going to take some time. Uh, yeah. Things are getting there, things are looking good. On day four, I did some test shots of some different picture profiles in my workspace. This is S-Log2, slightly overexposed. When I add a basic grade, it looks like this. As before, I've turned the detail all the way down and I'm using s Gamut 3 Cine color space. Obviously, I'm shooting in 10 bit. And then this is S-Log3, which I've discovered still responds better if you slightly overexpose it. Now, just to be clear, I don't think this is anything to do with noise levels. It's more to do with the way that the contrast curve reacts once you grade it. For our grade, I'm gonna do a white balance correction, exposure adjustments. I'm gonna add a lookup table and then sculpt our contrast curve. And then just some final exposure adjustments for our output footage. Just for fun, I wanted to try out my Sigma 50mm f1.4 and this is more about autofocus and it was fantastic. At this stage, I'd be fairly confident with almost any Sigma lens with the Sigma NT11 adapter on this camera. It tracked my eye beautifully and I'm just using the default tracking settings. In the days ahead, I want to get my head around HLG to see what it can do and see what the good combinations are with different color spaces. So we've had a little bit of sun in the UK, so I headed straight out and I got some shots that I think were interesting because they tested the autofocus to the max. I tested a backlit scene in slow motion in S-Log3, so the lowest contrast possible just to see if it could keep up, and it did. I'm so impressed, it just makes me think that I need to start changing all my lenses to either Sigma or to Sony E-mount. I've also been looking into ways that we can mimic that s cinetone type look, either from a lookup table or in camera. I've graded this shot with the Venice look lookup table from Alastair Chapman, which Philip Bloom recommended. I'll link that website below if you want to download it. It's totally free. I tried this lookup table on a few different clips and I have to say I'm pretty blown away. The colors are gorgeous and natural, but then the dynamic range is simply ridiculous. All I can say is definitely, definitely go and get this lookup table, it's free. And there's also a video by ExtraShot, which I'll link below, where they tell you basically a way of mimicking or matching the look that you get from the FX9, which of course has a Cinetone. So let me switch to that right now. And there we go, I can't tell if it's any good. This is the very first time that I've tried it. It's based on one of the Cine profiles and then there's lots of color tweaks and tweaks to uh, the black level, that kind of thing. Uh, definitely just follow the link and go and find it. You can try it for yourself. I should say this mode is not designed specifically for the A7S III, it's designed for the A7 III. But yeah, you tell me, how does it look? Any good? So I'm gonna keep going and finding more information to help you guys. All I know is I'm loving using this camera so far. It's better than I ever thought it would be. Today I wanted to do a little section on the different file modes available in the A7S III. You've got the XAVC-S mode, which is H.264, and then you've got the XAVC-HS mode, which is 
H265. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the difference is, of course, the H265 mode is a more compressed version, but side to side, I couldn't tell the difference. It's a more efficient compression mode. I even tested boosting the exposure in post a couple of stops just to see if that affected the quality of the video in particularly the shadow areas. And I couldn't tell any difference. There was still a surprising amount of detail in the shadows even when zoomed into 300%. That seems really great because your 10-bit file sizes are much smaller, but obviously when you come to edit them, it's much slower. I noticed this whilst editing on my iMac 27 inch, which is no slouch, it's got plenty of RAM, it's fairly new, it was maxed out at the time. And I noticed with the H265 files, I was getting beach balling quite often. So what I've been doing is importing my files, selecting them all, and then transcoding them all into ProRes, which obviously runs like butter on Final Cut Pro. I've not tried editing these on Premiere Pro or Resolve, but I've heard they handle them not so well. So I think the key here is if you want to if you want a really fast workflow, transcode them and it just they run brilliantly. Personally, I think if you're willing to stick with the slightly higher file sizes of H.264, that they will run faster. So if you can if you can manage that extra storage that you'll need then that might be a better option for you. Because I did find that the H.264 files run much better than the H.265. There's a lot of things that I want to know how much it's improved from the A7S II, so I'm gonna test things like uh, low light to see definitively how much it's improved, if it has at all. And also things like how much the image has improved in terms of you know go going from 8-bit to 10-bit. I also want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of how the colour science has improved because everyone says it has on this camera and the little that I've used it I can tell it has. Anyway, over and out, see you tomorrow buddies. So our final entry and I'm cheating a little bit, this is actually day 8 because I went out last night on day 7 and shot some shots of some fireworks, at least I tried to as it was fireworks night here in the UK. I got a couple of shots that really show off what the A7S III can do and why the A7S line is such a special line of cameras. It's almost like they come alive at night or something. One thing I'd say is, from just looking at the clips, I couldn't tell a massive difference between the A7S II and the A7S III, but I definitely noticed it in editing when I'm obviously dealing with 10-bit footage now and I noticed that they grade much better, there's no kind of banding or anything like that, and, and actually noise cleans up even better than it used to. But the biggest deal for me was that I shot everything in S-Log3, and that is just testament to these new bigger file sizes and, you know, more flexibility to, to kind of play around with them. Anyway, now I'll show you the clips straight out of camera, and then I'll show you the processed versions, and I hope you enjoy them. See ya. So here's the first clip I got. I immediately I saw this couple that was sat on a bench and I could get them nicely backlit. And I love that you can almost see a silhouette around them. For these clips, I shot a range of different ISOs from about 6,400 all the way up to 80,000. And in some shots, you will see some noise. However, fear not, because once you apply some grading, usually the noise will disappear quite nicely. In terms of banding, there wasn't any when grading. But of course, bear in mind, this is uploaded to YouTube, which is still 8-bit, so you may see some. It's just the nature of the beast. Anyway, enjoy these clips in a properly graded sequence now. Anyway, there we go. Of course, I've got lots more content coming covering the A7S III. Just let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. And uh, until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys. I'm behind this hole.